Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Bishwajit Dhar and we are going to discuss the latest shenanigans or discussions in Davos. The World Economic Forum is meeting. Do they actually address the central question which has come today? The crisis of the so-called globalization they had followed, which is really a finance-led globalization. No, that is something that the, the Davos has uh, never addressed uh, uh, effectively. Although they make a lot of noise about how global capitalism is going to be uh, changed. They have been, um, every year they bring out a set of uh, documents which uh, talk about the fact that globalization has created uh, increasing inequality both across countries and within countries. But those seem to be just, uh, you know, uh, another way of uh, grandstanding, show that they are responsible people and they are uh, uh, aware of the problems and they are uh, they have the intentions of changing the system but in actual practice what you find in the discussions in the deliberations in Davos uh, year on end you find that there is a reinforcement of the status quo and uh, going towards more aggressive forms of globalization of course the characters change year after year. We are talking about the kind of policies that Davos or the World Economic Forum has always pursued. You were saying that they are making some lip services while having a more aggressive uh, globalization policy. So what are the aggressive globalization policies that today we are finding Davos is doing? No, for instance, you know, the, there's a very clear message coming from Davos uh, and, and some of the, the major CEOs making this point that uh, the, the real way forward for the global economy is just to focus on growth. You know, same old story that you've heard time and time again, and that, uh, you know, the only way in which growth, growth can be energized is through greater global integration and putting in place all these uh, new forms of uh, uh, trade agreements that you're seeing, for instance, TPP and uh, uh, in, in, you know, in the Asia Pacific region and a closer home, we have this uh, regional comprehensive economic partnership. So one is one is uh, seeing uh, you know a resurrection of these uh, uh, agreements uh, at a time when, uh, for instance, uh, Donald Trump has junked them, and uh, for all practical purposes, uh, TPP, which was standing on. Uh, the legs of the United States has no legs to go forward. So I think that uh, this has become a very big, big, uh, uh, you know, uh, issue in in Davos. That uh, these CEOs are coming together, and some of the world leaders are coming uh, uh, in in support of these leaders, saying that uh, you need to reinforce uh, the status quo going forward. Well, it's interesting that China has actually now taken up the mantle that the U.S. had in terms of propagating globalization. Of course, it's also true that they are the largest manufacturing country in the world today. And therefore, China propagating globalization means really opening other people's markets to their uh, global goods, their goods. Do you see China being able to shore up this uh, World Economic Forum's pro, uh, platform of greater global integration. Well, this is a very interesting dynamic that is taking place in Davos because uh, as as US uh, under Trump is uh, uh, showing signs of uh, uh, retreat and uh, talking about a more isolationist kind of a, uh, of a, uh, take, taking that kind of a view the the Chinese have become more aggressive and they seem to be taking the place of the the Americans and the speech that President Xi gave the other day on uh, uh, on globalization, on the benefits of globalization, and uh, he made a very strong point that globalization does not uh, result in the kind of problems that even World Economic Forum has been talking about in its in its reports. It was quite astounding. And uh, it's actually two ironies. One is let's not forget the global. Uh, globalization paradigm was selling opium to China. 
and that's with where three opium wars took place supposedly to open the Chinese economy. That's right. You know, and then we have the current scenario where the, the Western powers were aggressively pursuing globalization and now that it has come back to hit them, now they are talking about protection, protecting themselves essentially from those who they invaded earlier as it were economically. You are absolutely right. You know the, the, the circle seems to have come completely around from you know the late 70s. You know uh, uh, China was the one which got uh, which plunged into this whole process of globalization. Uh, and of course China did it on its own volition but other countries were other developing countries were pushed by you know the the Americans uh, aided and abetted by the uh, the fund bank the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund and then we had this whole great Washington consensus coming around um, uh, so we went through the whole cycle and and come the financial the great financial crisis of the 2008 when uh, Obama uh, Bush and then Obama realized that they had gone too far and they need to now start you know, le developing their own manufacturing and and get a little more, uh, you know, sort of inward looking, uh, and that the fact that they can't remain so open. Uh, well, Trump, you know, as a good businessman, uh, is not talking uh, diplomacy anymore. He's he's now been very clear that it's time for U.S. to close doors, and uh, they can't tolerate uh, trade anymore, and they have to go against open trade and become more inward looking. And who does jump into this? The first guy who actually got into this process of globalization. You know, it's interesting what you're saying is, of course, that Trump's argument is interesting, is about manufacturing. But real estate, finance, that has been the way actually globalization has taken place. And manufacturing has been hit also by the fact technological changes have taken place. You're going to see 3D printing, you're seeing automated factories. The old style employment that existed in the factories today is no longer possible to have that. Given that, it seems to be, Trump seems to be playing identity politics rather than even protectionist. For Trump, you know, it's also a fact that, you know, it's, it's in the, in the uh, good old world of, of manufacturing that employment really lies. Yeah? So on the one hand, there is a compulsion you know, uh, for, for Donald Trump and that was his vote bank, you know, in Michigan and other places when he went and sold this idea of creating more jobs. So he has this compulsion of creating jobs. So without the, you know, good old world, he can't actually get those jobs. The other thing that has actually happened with China is that China is right there in the world of finance that you're talking about. Yeah? Uh, 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 over the past few years, China has calibrated uh, the entry of yuan into this big ba bad world of finance and uh, uh, you know we saw uh, you know a uh, short while back that uh, the uh, Chinese yuan is now a part of the SDRs so it's, it's so in a way it has been recognized as an international currency so in 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 one way the Chinese are also playing the same same old game of uh, coming into this whole process of uh, globalization using the same old tricks of uh, finance and also also technology no let's not forget about the fact that uh, you know if uh, if uh, uh, you know the uh, patent numbers are any indicator of innovation you know chinese are way ahead of the americans uh, and uh, you know the you know I was uh, the total number of uh, the total patent applications in China the Chinese uh, patent office uh, uh, has crossed uh, uh, a million mark, you know? and and the and the Americans are lagging behind. They're not even um, half a million. Uh, so the Chinese uh, uh, you know the Chinese development will have to be viewed to seen very carefully in light of the aggression that they are now showing. But as far as Davos is concerned, are we seeing anything new in order to ag address one central issue which has been plaguing a lot of the countries, which is the so-called iniquitous, iniquitous tax regime, by which some countries benefit for, or for what it's called tax havens, which are really 
uh, phenomena of certain Western countries, the US, uh, Britain, which is really one of the biggest tax havens in the world, and also to some extent uh, Europe. Do you see that the DevOps coming uh, out with anything that addresses these issues which are really again close to the financial world we are talking about? No, not really, because you know, for two reasons. First, in terms of um, you know the you know of the crisis of capitalism, uh, DevOps uh, uh, you know admits, and and there have been several publications which admit that capitalism is in crisis. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, now they are wa wa wanting to find ways. They are actually instigating others to help them to find ways uh, out of this crisis. But, but interestingly, what has happened is that China has come, come in and reinforced the fact that the old, you know, the old model of, ca of capitalist development is the right way to go forward. Now, if you have the second largest economy and moving towards the, the largest economy very soon, if, the, if that economy and the, the, the president comes and reinforces uh, the, uh, you know, the, the benefits and the virtues of uh, capitalism, then there is very little that the capitalist world uh, can do to undo uh, the damage that it itself perceives of the system. So that's point number one. And linked to that is the fact that you ask the question that, you know, the, the 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 real culprit behind this capitalism and the, the exploitative nature of capitalism is capital itself, the form of capital and the way as you were rightly mentioning, they use these tax havens and they're going around. Now, uh, a few years back, G20 tried to address this issue. They called it base erosion, profit shifting uh, process of you know the the global companies uh, going around uh, doing this business in a very uh, you know, um, in a in a way that deprives both the home countries and the host countries uh, in a large number of ways. Now, one in the past few years, one didn't see any appetite uh, going forward. Now, again, interestingly, the push towards uh, uh, doing something on that count has uh, uh, it's coming from the United States. And again, Trump, you know, he comes and. Uh, took the center stage saying that the, the American companies cannot just, you know, put their money in other countries in different tax havens and deprive the American economy of investable surplus. So he is trying to again, you know, put uh, pressure on these companies, put some amount of discipline to bring back the ill-gotten wealth back into the U.S. Ill-gotten wealth from all over the world. All over the world. It has never happened in the past. In the past, you know, uh, you know, if you look at the history, the euro-dollar world got created because of American pressure of, you know, on the companies to bring back these funds into the U.S. It never happened. So uh, let's see what happens. Um, uh, but if history is any anything to rely on, I don't think the world of finance is going to be changing. It has changed for good in in the in the bad way. I don't think it's going to ever change. Thank you very much, Vishwajit. We'll keep discussing these issues as we go further. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Keep watching News Click for further episodes.